that is um, most desirable, the only thing standing between you and your lunch is the presentation that I'm about to give. Um, it is, in a way, a jump forward to what we are going to do after lunch. David will, in a minute, explain what we are going to do at 3 o'clock, at 4 o'clock, uh, and later till uh, the end of the afternoon. And it's um, my role to prepare us for that. We have been referring to the Living Values Project um, a few times already this morning. And what I will try to do is to make you aware and hopefully make you join us in thinking that this is a very important thing. I mean, I've been saying to myself, what, in which terms would I think this Salamanca meeting a great success? And of course, you think of the great hospitality of the university. You think of the great number of participants. You think of the great number of universities becoming new signatories. But in my book, the most important proof of success of this meeting would be the number of universities taking up, accepting the invitation to engage in a living values project. And I hope to clarify why this is. We have been speaking about values uh, many times, uh, so it makes sense to think for a moment um, what do we mean by values? This is the simplest kind of definition. Principles or standards of behavior, one's judgment of what is important in life. Important and lasting beliefs or ideals shared by the members of a culture about what is good or bad, what is desirable or undesirable. And in actual fact, in real life, values do have a major influence on a person's behavior and attitude, and also on a community's behavior and attitude. And thus, they are also crucial for the development of a university. And why exactly do, universe, do values matter for higher education institutions? Well, one answer to the question is, they're informing and steering profile setting. What kind of an institution do we want to be? Which interests do we want to serve? And why is that? Are we willing, are we desiring to be in education focusing on individual excellence for a limited group of people? Or is our value steering us towards working on inclusiveness? A second answer, values are in many ways quality markers, like for instance integrity in research operations. If in research we are not working with integrity, our results are not to be reliable and our funders and our beneficiaries are not going to be satisfied. Same thing about fairness in educational process. If the educational process in enrollment, in teaching, but also in testing and examining is not ruled by fairness and integrity, the value of it is to be doubted. A third answer, values matter because they are foundational matters of institutional self-understanding. We have often referred to them already this morning, autonomy, academic freedom, are the key values in terms of foundational principles. And the th fourth and last answer to this question, why do values matter for higher education institutions? They are guiding us in relations. They help us select with whom to partner and for what purpose, in national relations and in international relations. 
not just embark upon any relationship, but try to find out why and in which ways and based and honoring uh, which values is very important, especially in a globalizing um, landscape where we often uh, are crossing boundaries of cultural diversity, including lots of varieties um, in values. So identifying, discussing, and sharing core values is important to any higher education institution. And this is even more so in times when things are not quiet and easy, in times of political turbulence, in times of competing claims of ownership towards universities, and in times of internal fragmentation, where faculty, students of the same institution do not always, to say the least, share the same values. Under those circumstances, there is great amount of benefits in caring for your actual values. Which values are we talking about? Um, the answer will be different in different places at different times. Uh, probably we will share a couple of basic values uh, and we will differentiate um, on others. Usually we talk about enabling values like autonomy and academic freedom, about operational values like integrity and fairness and social values like uh, equity and social responsibility. But in actual fact, the whole process of working with your own values as an institution uh, should begin uh, by identifying uh, the core values that you want to live by as an institution. I'm not going to go into all these individual values, how much, however interesting that may be. Um, I want to emphasize um, that you have to do that yourself as an institution. But what we want uh, with the Living Values Project is that we want to make a difference from a world in which we are constantly talking about values making statements and declarations about them um, at conferences like this, at solemn occasions, at the anniversary of a university, as uh, the opening of a new academic season, while, um, as a matter of fact, the most important thing is that they should not be just declared and stated, but be lived, and that's exactly um, why the Magna Carta Observatory has embarked upon this Living Values project. And I try to give you a couple of short answers, and this afternoon we go into this much deeper. Why are we doing this? What could universities gain by using this toolkit? And how will it work? So this is just a, a very short introduction of it. The Living Values project, as David already said this morning, uh, can be found, um, described, and offered on our website. Uh, we worked with a number of universities, a number of experts in higher education in the last couple of years to prepare for it. Uh, we have had workshops in many different places. Ten universities have been helpful in piloting uh, the instrument, the way it was designed so far. Um, and we are looking for uh, your experience in further realizing um, the worth of this um, actual toolkit. This is the, the scope of um, piloting sites from um, Tasmania to S Sweden and from uh, Brazil uh, to Moscow. Um, we um, really uh, are representing a broad range of universities worldwide. The questions you will find answers in the material is first, why should university engage? And the short answer is, it will help you to increase community engagement. It is a toolkit to help you to develop the community, the academic community of teachers, researchers, and students uh, within 
uh, your institution. Why was the project designed? The short answer is, it is designed in a collegial spirit to help export good practices and to join forces in working on such a project. Why, who did develop it? As I said, a couple of uh, higher education experts with the help of 10 universities in nine countries acting as pilots. And we hope this to be only the beginning of the learning process. So we look forward to all of you who engage um, in this project to be further uh, improving it, enhancing it, and handing it on to the next group of uh, universities um, working with the Living Values Project in the years to come. Which values are included? As I said before, we are not being prescriptive here. Of course, we expect our signatories to, um, in the first place, uh, work on the basis of the canon of values in the Magna Carta Universitatum, but we also expect all of us to add and identify values that are specifically of importance in our own setting. What are the benefits of reviewing your institutional values and how they are lived? In, in, again, the short answer is it will enable a university to enhance its performance because it's strengthening its community. It is strengthening its value base. It helps the university to stand as a united community to work uh, towards the challenges of today and tomorrow. We have uh, already listed some benefits that have been identified by our pilot sites, and I look forward to a much longer list of benefits to come up in uh, coming years. How can my university engage with the Living Values Project? Well, the first way, first way of doing this is very simple. Just go to our website, use the material, and start working with the toolkit, whatever is applicable in your situation. You might, however, want help and consulting. We have a number of experts available for that purpose, and we hope in the coming years to organize workshops where universities who have been working with the Living Values Project will share their experience and learn from each other. And this is the offer that we are going to discuss this afternoon. This is the offer that basically is outlined on our website. And this is, uh, for me as president of Magna Carta Observatory, uh, the main takeaway of our conference and our ceremony this year, uh, to have the practice of values, to have living values, restate, reiterate, and strengthen the declarations we make about values. Each time we speak of our high ideals in higher education, it should cross our minds, but are we doing this? But are we realizing this? And this is a tool meant to help that, qu that question, to help us realize what we want to do, to help us practice what we preach. Thank you very much. Seibold has one of the toughest tasks in this particular conference of condensing two years' work into about 15 minutes. Just a word about this afternoon before you go um, to lunch. You each have in your packs um, a list of who has opted to go to which of the sessions this afternoon. Um, if you find that as a result of conversations with people, you would prefer to go to a session other than the one you've listed to, to go to, you're very welcome to do that because there is space in all of the rooms. After lunch, starting at three o'clock, we split into four groups. 
The details are on your programme. Each of those groups is going to be facilitated by somebody who's had a leading role in the Living Values project and will have evidence from one or two pilots involved in the process. But about half of the time will be put across to you to ask questions, to think how it might be applied in your institution. And then there'll be a crazy moment at about 3.55 when the sessions will end and you will move to the next one and we'll do it all again. And then after that and after a cup of tea, we will come back into this room for a panel session, um, some high-level thoughts on what we think we've learnt from all of this. Um, a couple of ambassadors, a couple of pilot sites, and an opportunity to digest it um, a little bit more. So, thank you all for your attention this morning. <laughs>